You are now tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. When you finally boil it all down, magic is imagination. We, we, we are moving into an age of manifestation. Make the things become actually less material, more ethereal. The, the, the golden dawn is when we awaken to this new, new, new station of life. What you think becomes real quicker. Regain our imagination, regain our inner child, and let that inner child out, 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 out. My name is Frank Castle, founding member of the music group High Slick and New York City Neo Shaman. After a serious injury sidelined my career in 2013, I decided to set out on an adventure to search for myself with the help of the plant medicine Ayahuasca. What I discovered waiting for me was something I could have never prepared for. It was time for me to become something more, someone more. It was time I became fearless. What is up, everybody? It's Saturday night. It's nine o'clock. I'm your host, Frank Castle, and I'm here with my etherical translator and pure awesomeness, Paula Milo. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. That was weak <laughs> as it I'm gets. Sorry. Hey, hey. We also have a, a special in house guest tonight. It's very exciting. Very, very, very exciting. exciting. Um, a friend of mine came from a distant land to visit and allegedly enjoy. Um, Plant medicine ceremonies, and we're going to talk about it. He's uh, his name's Mister E. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> it is so good to have you. Remember that it is the message, not the messenger. So we're just going to keep it cool like that. I want to give a shout out to Chris and Cherie, like always. Without them, we would not be here, rocking it fearless style right. for you every Saturday night. Um, don't forget to sign up over uh, TFR. TruthFrequencyRadio.com. Sign up. Get a membership. A subscription. A subscription. A membership. All of that is good because what we do here um, is great, give great content. There's so many hosts and we have a, a mobile app that you could listen to and you could always contact us. It's really great. I love being part of this family. Uh, you know what they say. Wherever you are, make it TFR. So don't forget to sign up. And special thanks for those who did sign up. Shout outs to everybody in the chat room for always keeping it real. And uh, don't forget to check out Heist Click, H E I S T C L I C K, Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, Reverb Nation at Heist Click Music. Check it out, show your support, and uh, let's start the show. Welcome to the now, guys. Here's my disclaimer because I have to give one because you guys are crazy after listening to my crazy. <laughs> Uh, this is the story of my journey and my journey alone. I don't suggest you try this at home alone, unless you are ready, that is. And then by all means, proceed. But first, we suggest finding a responsible shaman, a reputable shaman who knows what he or she is doing and travel safe in the love and the light. And remember, the universe rewards bravery. I can't believe that tonight's show coincides with exactly one year ago, Mystery came pretty much, it's off by a few days, like five days. Yeah. And uh, you came in, and we had a ceremony. And I know I already spoke about us a while back when we first hung out, and that it was questionable. My shamanism didn't really work right. It kind of worked on me a little, didn't really work on you. So this was, like, very important to me that you specifically were coming. And I, I, we talked about this over and over. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. So when you arrived, it was perfect for you. Um, I'll just say... Really quick, because it was 4th of July last year. Um, the way I remember it, uh, we were sitting back. I'll jump right into it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were having a great time. We sat down. We were in the basement. Um, we, we did the whole ceremony to where we drank. We saved. We did what we had to do. We sat back, and we literally waited like an hour, and nothing really happened. 
Yeah, and because we we uh, if if I remember properly as well, I think we started off and it uh, we decided to go the natural route and we're listening to uh, some of the acaros sang by the indigenous peoples. Of, oh my! Uh, I think Peru or somewhere else, which is it's it's a really fascinating listen. If you've never had the opportunity, there's a lot of kind of gentle pound. I don't want to start pounding the yeah. counter, but like <laughs> gentle pounding and rustling and uh, the, fire you can hear the fire crackling and the occasional odd person perhaps retching in the background but uh there, there's a very uh the, the the downstairs vibe had a very sort of outdoor campfirey thing but nothing really seemed to kind of be changing so i personally rested my eyes like well let me, let me just kind of see where this goes and then i remember just feeling this very fast feeling of movement and then opening my eyes and the next thing i know uh the the you know so I had opened my eyes, but there was sort of an overlay of lines, sort of like an Alex Gray painting or something. And then I booted uh, and purged, and uh, I felt uh, I felt better after that. I felt, uh, uh, you know, it, that that sort of opened me up to the next uh, facet of the the voyage, as it were. But I mean, yeah, you'd met, kind of mentioned the the first time uh, the. You know, some people talk about the uh, smell and the taste, and uh, yeah, what did what did that do for you? I, I wasn't. I mean, it's it's interesting because uh, uh, the 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 rue is almost maybe the more um, uh, the the more interesting sort of difficult taste. Uh, it's 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 all very kind of camp fiery, uh, v- vaguely uh, alkaline, um, but I mean the, the taste earthy. Or definitely, definitely earthy, and you can smell it in the air, and it's it's. There's something very kind of familiar about it too. So I mean, dipping the toes in the first time, you know, it there was something definitely familiar about it because it is, you know, something that's inside of our own brains. It's something that we experience every night and during daydreams and whatever. Absolutely. Uh, so I mean, it, it it there's something very familiar about it. It didn't quite sort of break through. Kind of had some of the awareness that the things were going around but couldn't directly engage them but definitely that second time uh, was it was a bit more of a breakthrough now i remember um you were very relaxed i was sitting in the chair i had a little bit of a shake to me i get that way beforehand and i think oh my god like what's gonna happen is it gonna happen i want to make sure it's gonna happen and i remember you just looking over at me like very calmly and i thought i was reading your mind for a second like, yo, when is this going to hit? I hope this isn't like a rehash of the last time. And then I was like, you're right. And you're like, yeah, I'm fine. And then you, the, the purge happened right there. And you just grabbed the bucket. Blah! And I was like, oh, oh my. And then I grabbed my bucket and purge. I made sure you were okay. And then I was like, are you all right? Yeah. And then we sat quietly for like five minutes. It felt like five minutes. And I could have swore the singing from the Aikiro, they're in, uh, Spanish or whatever language that would be, you yeah. know, and the song, all of a sudden I started understanding it. Right. And it just sounded like I knew what he was, all his inflections and his tones and the way the drumming patterns were going. I said, Oh, and I look up at the wall and I start seeing, um, patterns. It almost looked like, um, hieroglyphic would jump off the wall and then form a pattern of what he was actually singing. And I saw like the people walking and the, you know, the, they were hunting at one point. And I said, Oh look, I can see the story unfolding as so I'm. It, so it like came to life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's what was explained to me. The Aikiros do, yeah. but that was my first experience with that. Oh, yeah. So I was, I was enjoying, but I looked over at you and your mouth was open and you were looking at the same wall and you were like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? And then you're like, well, it's kind of something's happening right there. And I'm like, yo, I could see the words coming off the wall. Now, what did, what did you feel? Did you when it first because that was when it first hit you, you were wide eyed. Well, and, it, and it's interesting uh, that you mentioned because I'm trying to remember the the name of the people who sing the Akaros. It's something like the I, I forget, but the. The the really good ones. I mean, in in modern music, you know, you write a song and it makes people feel, you know, whatever, you know, the 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 empathy to whatever you're singing. Whereas these, it's painting with words and syllables, and it's very fascinating because they're creating, you know, snakes or they're creating geometric it's amazing. patterns. The patterns or, are unreal, and the the notes they hold and the things they do, it creates a whole sort of framework. So and and. 
you know, seeing the, uh, you know, reading Straussman's work and, and you know, the, there's definitely a whole system of, uh, I think it's described as sort of the, the logos, uh, the, the sort of uh, direct kind of contextual sort of matter stuff that, that holds uh, the definition of reality inside of it, like a symbol, which like you look at some of the Mayan writing and pictographs, you know, it's, it's, there's almost like, I sometimes feel some of that isn't so much about letters or, or syllables. Some of that is actually kind of stories and, you know, in, in perhaps whatever their mental state was evolved, you know, how it may have been, they would look at it and an entire sort of film would play out just by looking at sort of these pictograms. Yeah, exactly. There was a different sort of perception of that reality. And, uh, yeah, I mean the the it was very fascinating because the music I could also uh, there's a very distinct uh, heightening uh, of uh, you know intuition and empathy and I could you know as Frank was saying you could sort of understand uh, you know the words of the of of what some of they were saying or intention of what they were saying and some of the people like I almost felt like some I was mentioning like some of the singers may have been like creeps or something because it's like beautiful singer is great at doing it, but at the same time the same way that some of our rock stars like i almost felt some of the darkness inside some of these voices because well, you are writing the frequency and vibration of the actual shaman yeah he's in charge like a conductor of the entire thing that that happens mm-hmm. so it was um it's most impressionable mm-hmm. let's say all right so there was one point where i was totally um not aware that you were even in the room at mm-hmm. one point. And I said to myself, oh, man, what happened? And I opened my eyes and I didn't feel like we were in the room anymore. I didn't see you, but I wasn't looking at you. And I felt like a giant hand was on the back of my head pushing me forward. And I heard the hand that was grabbing my head actually held my whole head. So I was like, what's happening behind me? And I couldn't look. And then I started to get this feeling of um, – I'm not at home anymore. It, started, it felt like that classic abduction when people are saying, look, man, I opened my eyes. I, it looked like my room, but I knew it wasn't my room. And I felt like I was being worked on and they were kept going, be quiet, be quiet. What the hell did you do to your neck? Oh, my. I had three pinched nerves. So they were pushing me forward. I had five bulging discs. I felt every single one of them clicking and moving and they were like, oh, oh, my. And then I said out loud what did you do to my friend? I can't find him. He's not here. And I said, oh, no, they got Mr. E. And I I even shake in my voice because I remember saying like, oh, you can do whatever you need to do with me, but you can't, I'm the shaman. You can't do that to my, my people. Like, and I looked over and you were just right there and you looked over at me and I said, oh, he's here. Everything's fine. And I, I looked straight ahead and I remember rocketing out of the chair and flying to the ceiling and it wasn't in the room anymore. This was like a, looked like a lab was on one side, almost like a, something where like a rail car could pull up to, like in Disney, you could get in here and you could come out the other side, like two sides. And you were on the other track, like on the other ramp, the platform. And I looked over and you were sitting on a table and you waved to me and I waved back to you. And I was like, wow, he sees me. Then they filled me with color. Um, I was like in this, like I laid down and they were pouring colored sand into me for depletion of my chakra systems. And I said, what are you putting colored sand in me? And I remember afterwards you saying to me, I remember them putting something in you. And I said, I waved to you. Did you see me? And you were like, yo, I waved to you. You were like up in the air. And I was like, I can fly. But then we were still in it, you know, and I think four hours passed. Many other things happened to me. I cried a little bit. Uh, I had family member things go on, but you've all heard about my stuff. So pick up from there like did you do you remember having like a shared bit of experience it was it was actually kind of interesting because um uh i'll I'll come back to uh the purge a story about the purge when i get to the about the 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 new one but uh, it was interesting because one of my uh sort of intentions was to perhaps have some sort of uh contact with some entity yeah, or or intelligence greater than my own that could perhaps you know just elucidate, uh, illuminate, or otherwise Shit, knowledge. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was interesting because I, I and, and I've been to uh, um, you know salvia is legal in Massachusetts and uh, is an interesting sort of tool and I think very similar uh, experience wise in some respects and uh, 
I've, I've found myself uh, before in situations where, you know, I'm not sure if it's necessarily an astral place, but you definitely, there are places sort of like glass dome type things, almost like being in a snow globe, uh, kind of in space somewhere or something. But it was interesting because I remember last time having, like, it wasn't necessarily a conversation. Like I was, you know, maybe like I wasn't necessarily hoping to have just like a sit down, you know, cup of tea with a gray or something. Like, I, I don't know exactly what I was hoping for, perhaps. But what I ended up is I had sort of the impression of being, you know, in a in a snow globe, essentially a very, very big snow globe, almost maybe by myself. And then outside of this globe was a very, very large sort of you know, uh, I don't know if it was a giant being that was hundreds of yards tall or if it was just this insanely large consciousness beyond what I could sort of comprehend. But the thing that was fascinating about it was it was, uh, it, you know, the same way that we would be with a cockroach or something like there was the fact that it was there and it was paying attention and it was actually having this interest in that this awareness with me. Yes, it, it, there was, you know, the level that it, it would have that ability to sort of have that level of compassion or to actually go to that moment and you know the fly can't necessarily communicate with him but the fact that the fly was brought to him to have that sort of moment of like you're here i recognize that you're oh here. yeah that's huge yeah like hi i see you that that happened with one of the insects i met a mantis that way it appeared in front of me and he was going frantically like moving and when I got closer to him, I could hear him. Like all of a sudden it came in English instead of t- – t- t- and he just said, oh, I'm so happy you can see me. Please let me just show you my people because I can't believe we're both here together. And I went, he's super friendly. It's the nicest thing I've ever met. Yeah. And we just started communicating quickly. It ended when I talked about war though. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, and then it's, it's interesting too because uh, like you mentioned the, the work done and the rail car thing because uh, I've had times so. – you know, Sally has had uh, interesting sort of experiences. And one, t- you know, one of the Indeed. metaphors I use is kind of like the Lord of the Rings, where when they would put on the ring, it would be everything was sort of the same, but there was this other layer to it. And there's sort of the windiness to it, which is very sort of uh, etheric or astral mm-hmm. or, or, you know, along those lines. We say the space between spaces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the, on the chessboard. So I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, I'd, I'd taken, you know, a couple big hits of the Salvia. And closed my eyes and I was still in the room, but I could see sort of through the walls and in sort of the infinite space beyond everything. And there was this like sort of crazy looking like, you know, cartoony little like, you know, three foot tall black woman in like like a train that you would see like at a at a mall or something. One of those like little kitty trains. Like a tram car. And she had crazy like, you know, not cornrows, but like the like her hair was like braided and kind of in every sort of direction and she she seemed kind of crazy, but there didn't there was something sort of non threatening about her. And it was just like the train was yellow, red, and green, and I got on the train, and the next thing I know I was on like a Ferris wheel. And it was interesting because as I'm doing this rotation on this Ferris wheel, like there's sort of like almost like a computer, like a Windows bar that's like progress complete, and I can see like, you know, sixty percent, seventy percent, and then I, like by the end of it I was like I don't know it just happened, but I feel, you know, Amazing. sort of better. So there is this – I don't know this space and there's definitely the, the this perception of, you know, we exist in this very fixed linear space-time sort of, you know, uh, matter-based space. But for them, it's like there's this awareness of – they're talking about doing this thing. They're talking about coming here. Okay, they're they're going to be here soon. And there's sort of this preparation yeah. that's like, oh, they're here. Let's do it. We we do everything we can do. Every second counts yeah. to them, right? Yeah, and there's and there's there's definitely like an awareness and a, and a preparedness that has gone on. And a for compassion. One's it's like their. Well, Paula says this all the time that it's their purpose. Yeah, their their sole purpose. So you, you got to remember too, inside the matrix, you want to call it or whatever, if you're the creator. And you're, you are, you're a piece of source. You're a little creator, little mini me, right? But you can do all the things the big guy does. That's a beautiful thing. Once you have awareness of that, things start to change. You start to rise up through energy and vibration, frequency. They're bombarding us with energy, sound waves, frequencies, vibrations to keep us out of this. Every direction is absolutely clouded and punch drunk with ridiculousness. 
You know, I try not to touch on anything with that. I, I don't try to go any lower than ayahuasca on the show and, and mushrooms and stuff because if I start touching base on who's voting for who and to, it, we start falling into the layers. And the and dualism. I, into and, the trap, yeah. Into the actual trap itself. So what I, what I try to tend to do is go to the heart of the problem. Yes, ayahuasca is the answer. I, I firmly believe that it is the answer to all your issues and problems as long as you're willing to work with it. But it'll break the condition instantly. Mushrooms might not do that instantly. They're great for you. Uh, it's expanding, but you need to clear the computer. You need to reintroduce love again in all the gunked up hardware spots where you have to become clear again. You know, they yeah. have to unblock that stuff, get that stuff out of there so everything starts flowing again naturally. And then miraculously, somehow you can start seeing through this nonsense immediately. Yeah. Right? And then. What happens is we created this whole thing. So their purpose is to help us once we have been revealed, like we know yeah. what we're doing now. Yes, I'm the creator. I'm over here. Come help me. They fly down and help. And as long as you give them respect, they'll help because that's part of becoming working your way back to source. So you put these things there. They're in play for you to have help, whether good or bad. It's all part of you. Yeah. You know? So what? Um, what's your take on... I remember you had to look in your eye afterwards. I said, yo, you're all right. And you're like, yeah. So it hit you pretty hard, right? What happened like immediately afterwards? What did you feel? Well, so it, it's interesting because, you, the, you know, the, the, the Alex Gray sort of overlay type thing and um, seeing various things and then sort of uh, closing the eyes and then having a certain degree, I mean, you know, certain – you know, I, I had had a difficult time with a certain level of, uh, you know, it's not like looking for a closed eye visual so much as, you know, that, you know, what is the inner eye aware of at that moment? You know, and it's like I had de a definite sense of things going on, movement, perhaps, you know, entities or something. But I wasn't sort of able to see that a lot or like other times I would sort of be seeing kind of almost a movie but like it, it was sort of like watching it more so than like creating or participating in it and then sometimes the uh perception to hold on to that became difficult and you would just kind of like lose because of the amount of information going on but the um uh but you do gain that back well, and, and as time after you come home, oh, like at 28 days, it starts working hardcore. Oh, absolutely. And there's there's this I mean, there's there's a frame of mind. And, and you know, when we talk about the the the, the new time, uh, there, there's a certain um, frame of mind, which is a, it, it's a sort of uh, from a psychological perspective, it's a sort of breakdown of the cohesive kind of linear uh, consciousness narrative. All of a sudden, it's like where you're just kind of. I'm walking along and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. Like it's all of a sudden it's like it's not that the needle skips or anything. It's just like the needle's totally off the record and you're still standing on the record and it's like, okay. And then you can look at any other place on the record or you could go up on the arm or you can go underneath the turntable and it's like, well, that's certainly interesting. And then there's like, you know, there's that faced moment of – do I am I going to be going back into the groove at some point? Do I go back to the groove? Like there's there's definitely a you know this sort of this moment of kind of uh, I don't want to say insanity because that sounds like a like a scary thing, but it's 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 a stop of uh, sort of space time linear thought as one kind of pierces you know into uh, sort of non temporal uh, non time related dimensions you know and it's very fascinating and then it's sort of like reconstituting back into mundane three-dimensional uh matter-based space and then it's like okay i have a mouth and a tongue and now my eyes are open and we're having a conversation about this and okay i'm not you know it's and it's i found that the each you know sort of subsequent time there's kind of bringing more back and more of a recognizing of what's happening and uh I, you know, I, I suppose in a sense, I've I've been blessed to have never particularly been afraid. I mean, it's just, you know, it's... it's Did like, you have any fear? I mean, it, it, you know, it's, if anything, somewhat irrational fears. And I mean, if, if anything, the things I was afraid of, you know, if anything, would even give a huge sort of bump of validity in certain ways. Like the thing I would be afraid of is like, you know, piercing into some place in the astral where all of a sudden, you know, you get some sort of... Uh, 
giant uh, beetle or something, you know, comes and, and, you know, gets you through the heart with its pinchers. And then, right. you know, the next thing you know, somebody finds my pincered body in an apartment and it's like, you know, what is that? And it's like, but that claw mark could have been made by nothing in this planet. Dun, dun, dun. 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 And it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, I don't. It would be a re- like I'm not afraid to die, but it'd be a drag for like friends and loved ones. That's to what find that's my the hard part, right? Body, but I mean, like that's such kind of an irrational fear. Like if you told somebody, like my fear of doing it would be that something on the other side would be able, like a Freddy Krueger would be able to kill me over there, and I would die over here. What but- if you were so fearful? Do you think if you were over there and you just got so shocked, do you think you could have a heart attack? I suppose anything's possible. Or you, you might just give up you? or just jump out of, you know, snap your own silver cord and dip out of the body. Do you think that. they would be gentle enough for you to push you to that edge and bring you back comfortably, Dep- safely, if you submitted to that experience with them? I mean, a lot of it's free will. So, I mean, I just suppose it depends what you expect and who you encounter. And, you know, hopefully you've got somebody with uh, some understanding of the process and some ability to negate some of those negative forces. Absolutely. Well, that's what the shaman's there for. It's his job to help translate uh, your experience, help um, be the etherical translator. Um, it's such an interesting experience that it's it's a very no holds barred thing. I find that afterwards, I almost have a happy PTSD. Like I can't believe that just happens. Like some kind of drive-by consciousness up level. You know, they hit me with a brick of information, and I was like, "Whoa, that's amazing!" Didn't hurt. Hit me in the head. Right. Got it right where I needed it. And it's pretty funny when you think about it. But um, you know, you get shaked out, and you're freaked out, you're worried about different things. And uh, uh, when we come back, we're gonna since this picks up right after last week's episode, we're gonna ask. All of them, but it's like 28 days after the first time. I feel like I'm running down the sands of time. Your protection from the sand. Just to free my mind. I hope to find another day. What I've lost before. I'm trying to find my second thing so I can think some more. Don't try to tell me how it is or what can't be done. Because I'll be. No hate. No hype. No fear. We are EFR. Your protection from, from, from deception. Am I elite or is this a dream? It's a dream. It's a dream. A fantasy where I'd rather be. Rather be. Rather be. So come and talk with me. Come and walk with me. Is this a wake up call from my reality? Have you seen my friends? Have you seen my girl? Wake me up from this. Now we're a week from last week's episode, so it's just lining up perfect. Now I have just one question for you. Oh, by the way, that was me, Frank Castle, come alive, um, iTunes and everywhere else they sell anything. Would you, Mr. E, suggest somebody else doing this having this experience i have actually i mean it, and it's i find becoming more and more prevalent and uh the awareness on facebook you know or you know that is to say something as mainstream as facebook you know a lot of people are seeing a lot of posts and you know uh more so perhaps from the 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 left side of things uh uh you know but uh I, I find people from all walks of life can and are helped by uh, it. I mean, it's, the biggest thing is is um, people have a fear of I, I don't want to say a fear of letting go, but to a d- degree, it is like uh, people it's the have throw a throw up part. You know, there's a big part of that too, which is funny because you know it's people. Yeah, I might throw up, and it's like the first time I did it, I didn't throw up. The second time I did, but it only li- like it's not like. 30 seconds at most. Yeah, it, it's not like drinking where you feel sick for a while and then you throw up and then you still feel sick for a while. You like, feel it's, great. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's almost as if, like, it, you know, the first time that I, that I uh, purged, it was funny because I swore that there were, like, sticks and things inside of it. Like, I, I felt like it was pulling this <laughs> darkness from inside of me. And, uh, you know, I, I think sometimes that's, you know... 
you know, what's needed for the process. And other times it's not. And I mean, it's, it, it's not that it necessarily tastes gross or anything. It just, uh, it's whatever the, you know, that you need to whatever have the come plant, out. Yeah. Whatever the plant needs for you to, to, to have happen, you know, so. Absolutely. So you, yes, is basically. But yeah, I mean, I've, I have suggested it to other people. Not, I mean, not, so, I mean, it's not a matter of people enjoying it or not, but I mean, some people like, I mean, all people could benefit from it, but some people it's, it's, you it's know, discovery. There's, there's no like real mental discovery. Yeah. And I mean, some people, you, know, you can tell some people are ready and looking for the thing that will afford that opportunity. And I mean, you know, it, it can offer that to anybody. Some people maybe personally aren't quite ready for that dose of, uh, truth about the world around them and themselves i mean some people are very uh you know um i don't want to say delusional but i mean you know there's a lot of cognitive dissonance about who and what is really going on in the world oh, yeah. and yeah. some people aren't ready to kind of look at what that actually that'll is. that'll break so. your delusional stance at the world instantly and that's i mean that's the only it's thing fracturing. to freak you out is if you know if you're really attached to this politician is the most wonderful person in the world or this is the best thing in the world <laughs> I, you, you're you're gonna get a dose of of truth and you know if you've defended somebody who's done bad things you suddenly have to you know if not apologize to other people apologize to yourself and some people aren't ready for those feelings and to and, love themselves. And yeah. at, at a certain point, you know, if, if, if we want what's for what's best for everybody and not our own personal argument, you know, winning an argument, then, then, you know, if you're ready to grow up, then, I mean, it's, it's a huge positive tool. And, to and help. what is the quote that we say on this show all the time? You want to be happy? Oh, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? If you want to be right and you want to be the person that figured it out or the person that had the answer and the person that always wins the argument, that's wonderful, but you'll never be happy. You want to make yourself happy, you fix yourself. Now, let me ask you a question now. We're back to our little part of the story. A week after, right, your Mm -hmm. first experience. You don't. You're not known for any kind of anything with no, psychedelics. No, or... I didn't smoke a cigarette growing up. I mean, there's nothing. Like nothing. And, and yeah. like I oh. said, I just did this really to um, not sound like a hypocrite when we were talking and see what you see and feel what you feel. Um, but when I decided to drink, it was a very personal decision, and it is not for everybody. And I think if you are, if you have woken up. Uh, or been enlightened in, enlightened it's in, like the in, next la- in, logical yeah. step if yeah it's the next logical step but if you, and if you are looking to wake up but if you're gonna if you're looking to go in and have uh, to be entertained or to go see neat stuff that's not what this is about this is truly a plant medicine and it's there to fix you but along with that comes all this other information Oh, absolutely. So it could either come in the form of downloads. You get downloaded information. You either, yeah, or you have to fix yourself internally. It's a very uh, internal, a very personal um, experience that you're going to have. Or it's going to wake you up, like Mr. E said, it's going to wake you up about what's going on in the world around you. And if you don't think you're ready to handle that information, you know, then you'd really have to consider whether or not you're ready to drink. I mean, it is an eye opener. Um, I believed in God. I have a very strong belief in God. Um, I was raised Catholic. I'm a terrible Catholic. Um, That's a good thing. It just. <laughs> oh, no. Because they're terrible. No, no, no. Of course. It's, it, I'm teasing. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. It, no, I'm not really. But it. <laughs> I was Catholic. Opened too. my <laughs> mind and broadened my view that God is the the idea of God is so much bigger than what we think it is. We humanize God and we we make God sound like an external source when it's really not. It's the universe. It's right inside you. You are the creator. You are connected to source. There's only you, you all you need to do is connect to source. Speak your truth. Live your life. That but that should that within mm-hmm. that I want people to understand that that is the superpower. If you're an X-Men, because that's what I keep referring to, you're one of the X-Men, this is what unlocks that superpower is the connection to source. You realize your purpose and then you start understanding once you're cleaned out what you're meant to do. What am I here for? You start remembering your contracts. Yeah. Your past lives. Before we come in, yeah. Different fractals of you. 
throughout the multiverse. I mean, this is what opens to you after you're cleaned out. Oh, absolutely. Your Kundalini rises or it doesn't and you're still connected. It doesn't matter. Everyone has their own special way of doing it. There's no right way or wrong way. Yeah, there's no right way and wrong way. And the talking about the 20 days, uh, the 28 days after the after ceremony, it uh, really is. It just gives you these da- – each day you get a download of information or you hear the news in a different way or you see things in a different way. Uh, the synchronicities, everything starts uh, – all of the dots start connecting. And uh, you just become more aware of self. And I think that's I, that's all they want us to do anyway is be more aware of self. Uh, it, that's what's the most important and all the answers are within you. Oh, absolutely. If you look through um, the, for information externally, you'll always be searching and you'll always be let down because you'll always be led down a rabbit hole because you're an individual. You think on your own. You have your own belief system. Yeah, you could hook onto someone else's but you'll always find something a little squirrely. Because the puzzle piece doesn't fit right if you use a hundred percent of what they're saying only. Because it's from their perspective, in, in the from narrative, their, in their life, in their reality, it's their perspective in their. You're reality. in your own creative bubble, your aura. You can manifest within it. It's your experience, your creative abilities within a shared universe. A shared. Think of it as a construct, and we're all in it, but we're all. Working as a team subconsciously with what we're thinking and pushing and creating thought form entities. And then on the level, we're a bunch of different personalities expressing source. So every single person will be an individual and have an individual puzzle piece of the greater whole. And you have to understand that, that even your enemy has 10% truth. Even the liar has 10% truth. All of us have a little bit of our truth. Because it's their truth. It's their truth. It may not be your truth, but in their world, in their life, it's their truth. You, like what people say, you know, like when you say to the kids, you're not the center of the universe. You know? Yeah, but you so, are, though. But you are. You're the center of the universe in your reality. That's a big deal when you finally realize break that, into that. Yeah, it is about you. Like, oh, well, you know what? It's not about me. It is about you. Yeah. The, this life that you're living is uh, completely about you. But it's an equal you. share for you and the person next to you. Everyone is the hero in their movie. Yeah. Stop looking for Superman. Become Superman. Stop looking for this character. Become the character. Be the new guy. Listen, if you're a religious, the devil can only replicate things. He can't creatively make his new stuff. This is where you beat him at his own game. Become better than him. Create. Do it. Mystery, I got a question. Yes, sir. 28 days after... Because we're going to connect it to what happened yesterday, mm-hmm. even what happened both of you over the last year to get to this moment. Did you feel the leveling up process after your experience with ayahuasca? Uh, yeah, and, and I I would imagine that uh, I mean we'll we'll get to uh, you know I think we'll get to to uh, the, the the recent experience, but I think. Uh, it, I mean, that was definitely more of a um, – because the first time was sort of like hearing it, becoming familiar with the smell and, and sort of the process as it were. The second time, you know, it you know it hit me. And it was funny because I was expecting something sort of somewhat uh, maybe gradual and not as sort of pronounced. But, you know, you're just kind of – it was just kind of sitting around and all of a sudden uh, – Smash. Yeah. I mean it was like – it was – you know, because – here, you know, the perspective of my ears, the song didn't really change at all. But then all of a sudden, you know, my my perspective, my my perception. Yeah, my internal sort of dialogue, uh, you know, just started like sort of coming at me from, you know, in front of me. And it was like, whoa, whoa that's that's different. Uh, OK, yeah. And then uh, uh, but then after so, I mean, after that, it was it was definitely a way, you know, a sort of opening up uh, and a realization to. That you know, because you can read about uh, more subtle uh, aspects of reality and higher dimensions and these types of things, and uh, astral and ethereal and uh, nonlinear time and space. Uh, but until you kind of actually start getting into it, and especially when we lack uh, so much of a 
you know, in South America, they, the shamans will tell you, you know, when you take it, you'll end up in this place and you can do this to go here and this to go here. Uh, up here as, you know, white men, crackers, you know, all of us uh, Western sort of American uh, technological whatever is, you know, we don't have so much of that framework. So, you know, the last time definitely it, it showed me sort of that space and, and the familiarity I had with that sort of being so similar and as familiar as sort of just almost like dream space because there's you know it's just sliding in and out of you know maintaining consciousness while going to that other you know aspect you know whether your consciousness goes somewhere else here in local space time or goes to you but know you get realms. that answer deeper into the experience don't you oh yeah you, you start realizing what's happening and then you're sitting in it for so long that you become aware of what is going on at all times. You're like, wow, this is amazing. I could see the future and the past and possible futures and my past and your past. I, oh my God, I'm connected to you. Mm -hmm. We're all connected. You love me. I mean, there's so much input coming in. And, and the downloads kind of keep opening up well, like the information you learn this day, the next the human, day you, you learn more and more. Yes, if, yes. You know, and the human is. suit is only, uh, has the ability to filter this information and your brain has to like re- uh, rethink, learn how to yeah, think let, again, reprogram it, and create new neurological sort yeah. of yeah. pathways. Yeah. To, yeah. Everything you find out has been a lie, and there you're now you're finding yeah. the truth. Well, it's a lot of reprogramming. Now, let me ask you a question because um, we got about 10 minutes, right? Maybe a little more, uh, 20 minutes. And now a year goes by. Now, it jumps in our story because we want to talk about what happened in the last uh, last night. How long before last night did you know you should have drank again from the last time you drank? Which was last year. I know that. It was like November. Oh, you're saying, oh, because I, I wait a long time. Yeah, yeah. How uh, long did you know, though, before you knew you definitely needed to drink again? Because this isn't just a one-time thing. The more you open up and you do this. Uh, yeah, there are milestones in your my, my, not mile markers in your life that uh, that'll uh, that'll occur, and then you'll know it's time to drink again. Yeah, you'll you'll start getting cloudy again. Yeah, things will start bothering you hardcore. You get depressive. Pain becomes relevant yeah, again. Yeah. You start thinking in a different, but now you can feel the disgustingness of the lower vibration. Okay, now, Mister E, we're back. It's been a year. What happened yesterday, man? Uh, it, well, that, that was that was interesting because uh, you know, sort of you know, uh, consumption, and then we were listening to a, a mix of different types of music and just kind of talking and hanging out and laughing uh, a lot. Yeah, and I mean, nothing kind of nervous at all. Uh, you know, lights lights were up a little bit, and uh, nothing kind of seemed different. But then it was interesting because I could I, I felt my perspective kind of shifting from directly behind my eyes to kind of a little bit maybe over to the side, and then uh, I realized like there's this interesting sort of thing of like you know the room I'm in exists, but then it feels like there's nothing else beyond that aside from just like empty space or like being in space or something. And then like the room seems somewhat plastic and then perception of time, instead of it being 24 frames a second is like hundreds of frames a second. And it's like, this all changed very abruptly, very quickly. And suddenly walking from to the bathroom, uh, like the awareness of, of molecules of, of, you know, air, uh, air <laughs> and, and how light reflects off of that in an infinite manner and in an infinite sort of uh, dimensional occurrence of a roll of paper towels behind a paper towel, like a between a set of uh, mirrors across one It's like one more's another. happening in the space because it warps and becomes... What's well, different? It's, it's like with, with expanded somewhat. It's, not, it's almost ex exponential, like... With yeah, with space is exponential. When 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 an object pass, passes through a plane, you lose a level. So if a line goes through a plane, you get a point. If a if a square goes through a plane, you get a line. If a cube goes through Which a plane, are the you get a square. Lines. And so like when you've got a multi dimensional existence with an infinite amount of realities occurring at the same time, you know there's <laughs> all those crossroads you're at. Yeah, exactly. So there's another you. That's infinitely crazy. And then there's that moment of, you know, where you're actually kind of existing within that, you know, the middle of those mirrors where there's a million of you on either side kind of doing, you know. Everyone every slightly different. Yeah. Infinitely doing everything. Yeah. Experiencing all, as, as Josh would say. 
And then I felt like there was Yeah, a, that's right. He would say that. Yes, he would. He definitely. Shout out. Everything outs. is all. Shout yeah. out to Brian, too. Hang in there, guy. Love you. And then there was a... I, I felt at one point when I went in the bathroom, there was like a... I felt there was an entity that was sort of like a uh, cosmic like bathroom attendant. It seemed kind of like a uh, cosmic union government worker or something seemed like very non-plus to have to you know have the job where he's standing where there with a clipboard making sure i'm getting done what i need to get done in there um that was uh a pretty interesting sort of uh thing but i mean it definitely with light there was there was a the, sort of like I've, i had had with salvia before just the um uh, the string of multidimensionality inside of things and, and, you know, experiencing more of an open eye hallucination. I mean, I want to say hallucination, but an open eye awareness. Uh, yeah, it's and definitely then, not a hallucination. Yeah, yeah. that discredits it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, when closing my eyes, uh, you know, that level of uh, sort of creation and uh, uh, understanding as well. So, I mean, it was... It was it was definitely distinctly uh, profound. Like I didn't think anything. It was like it's been an hour and a half. I, you know, as anything, and then all of a sudden it was like whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay. All right. As the scenery changes within this, I'm just going to quickly go over some of the things that happened in my experience. I remember going. Um, it said to me, "I said I want to see my allies again," mm-hmm. and. As I was talking, they were like, who are you? And I said, I am the creator, the man who walks in all worlds. Um, Son of Ra, fearless one. Then it goes, I said, I am the creator, um, the man who walks in all worlds, son of Ra. And it stopped. It wouldn't let me go any further. And then I am the creator, the man who walks in all worlds, stop. And then I went, I am the creator. And then it stopped me again. And then I went, I, and I, listen, this is what I did to experience this. Everyone was under and I wasn't and I kept drinking everyone's ayahuasca. I was just going to the table shot glass and it going, why is this working? Why is this working? And they were having the greatest experience ever. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to lay down. Screw this. And I thought I was sleeping and this occurred as I was sleeping, but I I never went to sleep. I opened my eyes and I experienced the eye. When I said I, I was just one being floating, like you said, in empty space. And it was everything that's happening everywhere. And the I sounded like I. And it was like, like as if God was saying it. And I was like, this is amazing. And then I opened my eyes. And I saw the throw up bucket, um, the purge bucket. And then. I opened my eyes again and it was me staring at me, staring at the bucket. And then I opened my eyes one more time and went, what's going on? And I realized that I wasn't here. It was a dream within a dream within a dream. And then I was back, which is the four words working backwards now. Now I'm allowed to say them. So it was like zipping into the eye and then coming back to the all. Most intense, guys. Um, So my grandfather, I told him I'm fearless and he should be fearless as well. And... um, I have some other stuff that I'm not really uh, overly sure I want to discuss that were oh, personal because I started crying and then laughing. I did the cry laugh and they kept sucking me out of my body mm-hmm. and then doing something to my actual body and then throwing me in. You've seen me do this. I'll start moving like mm-hmm. I'm reaching out like what's happening and then I'll faint again. Right, right. But I'm not fainting. But you're actually having a death experience. But you're not – when you do this over and over again, it doesn't feel like death. It feels like fun almost. Like you're popping in and out, popping in and out. It's that first time when you play in that gray area, you start rising up and you're playfully doing it. You feel like you're dying. But if you pop in and out, it's almost like they're pulling you out, doing some work, putting you back in. How's that? And then you start moving again and then they want you to breathe, pull you right back out. Be, be in a comfortable position so you don't hurt your neck or anything as you go out. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of the time it's um, you can set your intention, but if they feel, if Aya feels that there's something else that needs that you need to work on, that's what they're that's that's the message they're sending you, not your intention. Um, she wins out all the time. She's going to do what she can to fix you. If you what, go what, in, whatever that means, and you submit and you say, "I lo- I go in with love." I will submit to this experience, which is submitting to you, which is sounds impossible, especially if you're a control freak. But this makes it work. It does. There's no bad trip. When you say, take me, protect me instantly, if you're seeing something or feeling something screwed up, it will hug you, so to speak. And you feel 
blissfully amazing. Then you think about what just happened. She talks to you or he talks to you, one of your guides talks to you, and then you're presented with the ability to do it again, possibly from a different perspective. So you're not afraid to talk to one of these beings or something. And then you work your way back into it, thus leveling up, becoming a little more fearless one percent or one piece of a percentage point at a time. Like we discussed the other day, it's just like Dungeons and Dragons. Well, it's incremental, right? You learn incrementally. You don't learn all at once. You learn as you go along. Right. Well, our ego makes us feel like we know everything. Right. Let me tell you, every time I hit this, last night I could only compare this to an LSD trip, except it was organic and I didn't feel alone in the world. Like I felt the oneness, which was – that's the best feeling in the world. Like you're not alone. Everyone's here with you. You could summon anything, anyone. You don't have to worry about demons and nonsense. You're up in the all. You know, it's the most high. Mm-hmm. This is you, people. I want you to start believing in yeah, this connection because connection to source. Yeah, your connection to source is not real. Not saying that you need this to have this. You don't need this. Happening. You need the message. But, but feel the connection to source. Yeah, the message is you are. Yeah. A co-creator. You are, you are the, the, creator, the creator. And there's a whole bunch of us. And we're all experiencing this through the expression in our avatar suit. My name's Frank. You're Mr. E. This is Paula. But in the background, your creator, creator, creator. See how that works? Start thinking that way. Start thinking with compassion and love and some kind of, um, what do we say? Um, the kind of love you have to have. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. How hard is that to, to Oh, my do, goodness. Though? It's one of the hardest things you'll ever do. But what can you definitely find unconditional love with? Oh, animals, definitely. Yes, right? So the animals shows you super compassion. Oh, what, what did we say? Uh, the, the animals didn't choose us, right? I take care of the animal. Right. They didn't choose us. It, 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 they, but they'll love you no matter what. I mean, it, they'll love they, you. I have to feed you every day. Yeah, you yeah, rely yeah. on me. Yeah. It's a beautiful it's thing. It's your responsibility, not theirs. An animal chooses you when it comes back. Absolutely. It does choose you. One of the things that I was shown last week under the DMT session was who my cat is. Etherically. Etherically. Squeak. Uh, squeak my cat, who we recently, not even a year ago, November, we, we saved the cat from dying. Literally saved him from and dying. He was... He was, he was one day away from dying. His sibling died the day before. He was very, very ill. Very ill. And you would think like, yeah, whatever, whatever. They told me, look, man, you had the choice. We sent the cat there. The cat was ill. It was in someone else's house. You had the choice to just walk away, act like you always act, you know, go, oh, it's an animal. You could have helped and then walked away. But you held that cat and then you looked at it and it wanted you. Like, Oh, it it wanted only you. I remember that. You held him while he couldn't see. Yeah, he couldn't see. He couldn't, he couldn't barely breathe, but something with my voice brought the cat to me and I fell in love. Well, I saw the cat. It's funny. When I had the Egyptian thing with you, Paula, mm-hmm. I, um, there was cats in the background. Mm-hmm. And they said, do you remember who he is? Why you call him Boobis all the time? They're like, that's his Egyptian name. And that's why you remember him. Look into his eyes. And I looked and we had that I look into you, you look into me. And I started yeah, crying and I said, you thank you eye. for coming back for me because I needed you. That's what really happened. I was about to snap in my world. You were under so much pressure. I was under so much yep, pressure. Right. The change in things were so crazy. And just as the whole world was about to break, Squeak popped into yep, our little baby. Little baby. Hello. Little baby. The little baby that needs your love and your care. And, and uh, things just completely changed. All of our problems were like we were just dealing with them, worrying about him. Yeah. So that is an unconditional love. You know, like he ran away and then came back. And instead of like you want to yeah. be like you little you, son you, of a, you, you know, wanna choke him. <laughs> but you can't. So you look at him and you're like. I remember how I felt two days ago. I'll kick him right in his ass. Why would he do this? I I felt like a little kid. And I just looked at him and hugged him and kissed him. And he snuggled with me. Uh, Mystery, thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for sharing your experience. Paula, thank you as always sharing your experience. And I want you guys to uh, stay tuned because Chris and Cherie are up next with Duke Bell. And this is True Frequency Radio. I'm Frank Castle. This is Fearless. Happy Saturday night. May the source be with you.